Hi guys, my name is John. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, I am blind. I have a legitimate service dog named Neeson. Are you gonna come up and say hi? Yeah, this is Neeson. He's from Guide Dogs for the Blind in California. Hello, sweetheart. And today we wanna talk to you guys about fake service dogs and why they are so prevalent in today's society. Uh, I am blind, however, I do not necessarily always look blind. Um, often I get people coming up to me and asking me nicely um, why I have a dog. Uh, the conversation will start, uh, excuse me sir, do you mind if I, or would you be okay if I ask you, or I don't mean to be rude sir, but can I ask you, and I, I, I don't get embarrassed, I don't get offended, I don't get super snarky or insensitive because people don't know. People are living in the 21st century, yet still they don't know. So I view every interaction like this as a chance to educate people. To educate people when it comes to what a guide dog is, what a service animal is, how they function, why they function the way they do, and how important they are to the lives of, of the people they help. Uh, unfortunately, I'm in the minority here. A lot of service dog users uh, get offended when people approach them to ask what their dog does. Um, they view it as an infringement on their human rights. Uh, they don't think it's anyone else's business why their dog is with them. And they can be quite snarky with people, uh, which honestly has not helped when it comes to the overwhelming uh, problem that is is the fake service dog industry because it is becoming an industry. You can literally go online and buy a dog harness, slap it on your dog, and call it a service animal. Right? I was in an airport a while ago. I took a short flight and in the boarding area there was a quote-unquote service dog um, I actually thought it was just a little dog that that was uh, in a crate that the lady who owned it was going to bring on the plane and just put the crate on the ground in front of her um, because you can do that if you have a small dog you can bring it on the plane with you if it's in a crate it turns out uh, this was an actual quote-unquote emotional support dog uh, the the dog barked on the airplane, it was quite vocal, and the only reason that I actually knew that it was a, a quote-unquote support, emotional support dog was when the lady got off when we landed, the uh, flight attendants were talking about it and they were not happy. The lady basically bullied her way through security with this dog, got on the plane with this dog, uh, showed no certification, no nothing. and. A large part of the reason why she was able to do that is because of the lack of willingness for anybody who had the authority to do so to go up to her and ask her to, to prove that her dog was legit. Okay? Just because you say your dog is a service dog does not mean your dog is a service dog. Um, there are a lot of legitimate disabilities out there that are not visible. Okay, I'm blind. That's pretty obvious. Okay, uh, people in a wheelchair, pretty obvious. Um, okay, um, there are dogs for hard of hearing. So if 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 you uh, are deaf, there are dogs that are expertly trained to assist you uh, with daily living. If you, um, if you have diabetes, there are specially trained dogs that can alert you when you're having a, a high blood sugar or low blood sugar. Um, if you have epilepsy, there are dogs trained to alert when you are about to have a seizure. Um, if you have anxiety, there are dogs trained to help uh, you, you cope with your anxiety, um, I know uh, um, there are dogs for other 
invisible disabilities. Um, the, the irony of this whole fake service dog industry is that all of the fake service dogs that I have read about or know of, I know of a couple myself, I've had a couple of run-ins, they belong to people who have invisible disabilities. I am yet to, to come across or hear of a situation where somebody actually faked a visible disability to, to, to bring their pet dog out in public. Um, the other ironic um, aspect of this whole situation to me is that you need to be you need to have some kind of mental health issue to stoop so low to pretend to have a disability so you can bring your dog out in public like you're basically trotting all over people that actually have legitimate reasons to have uh, service dogs with them so if if I could say one thing on behalf of all legitimate service dog handler teams to all you fake service dog owners out there it would be fuck off <laughs> <laughs>